now, for your listening pleasure, here's Polizzi and Rose, covering the week of media, marketing, and digital content news. This old marketing. Take it away, boys. Hello, my friends. This is Robert Rose. And welcome to episode number 333, 333 of This Old Marketing for Thursday, July 21st, 2022. And with me, as always, my good friend, my colleague, and, well, you know, a guy who definitely hasn't deleted all his text messages, Mr. Joe Polizzi. How are you? Now, what is this in relation to? You know, oh, you haven't been following the news uh, about the Secret Service and, and their... 187 minutes of deleted text messages. Oh, geez. I mean, I, I, I hear inklings, but you know, I don't follow the news. I, I just, yeah. I, yeah. I hear the news well, I from you, or yeah. if it's in Morning Brew or a little bit of New York Times, maybe. There you go. Well, it's all over the New York Times, so it would have been hard, it would have been hard to miss this because it's, it's pretty insane and honestly a little. Uh, a little unbelievable that the Secret Service is going, oh, yeah, we did this little IT project uh, and <laughs> deleted just the text messages you're looking for. Just, whoops, we, we, we forgot all that. And it's like there's been some IT security consultants that have been on Twitter and elsewhere going, really? Really? The agency in charge of cyber crimes and uh, as well as one of the most sophisticated security agencies on the planet ha- tried to migrate their information and do a, you know, a reboot of all of their systems and didn't do a backup. Really? Really? You know, it's it's a little it's it's a little it's a little crazy. When, when is this thing coming to an end? Today, apparently. Oh, really? Today is the last hearing. Yeah, today is, a, as we record this, today is supposed to be the last uh, hearing. They've, they've, of course, said that they reserve the right to have additional ones. But today is supposed to be the last, of uh, you know, sort of prime time, you know, big, you know, media covered hearing. So, yeah, but hopefully this thing comes to a conclusion soon. Well, the problem is it's going to come to a conclusion and then nothing's going to happen. Right. Well, that's the big fear. That's the, well, that's what everybody fears. I mean, that, most you know, of the old, time, that's yeah. what happens. You have these big hearings. I know this is a little bit different, but you have these big hearings. There's a lot of money, a lot of people power expended in this whole thing, and then nothing, because nobody can yeah. because of the what if it's the partisanship or whatever. Just nobody can make a decision on what to do. It's like, oh, okay, all right, yeah, it's out there. Yeah. We did our job. We looked into it. But no resolution. Right. And there was a very stern letter written. Exactly. <laughs> we, you know, we, we, very, we very strongly, in the strongest of all terms, con, you know, do not condone this behavior. There we go. Now, now we've done it. It's, it's definitely going to be a written letter. I learned this from my mom. She was great. <clears throat> Whenever we went out to eat somewhere or something happened with some customer service interaction, she would write a note. And she, if they're yeah. very stern, no. And I, by the way, I love my mother. She's great. And, <laughs> but it was a thing. She, and she's known for writing letters. So whenever something happens in the family, like we all say, oh, here comes a letter. Somebody's getting a letter. It's going to be a letter from my mother. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be a letter from my mother. <laughs> I could just see him on the news. A surprise turn. This is from a Mrs. Polizzi. Okay. Yes. You are hereby right. reprimanded. Congress. Yes. You have to Congress go sit, has issued you go sit a letter in a <laughs> from a Mrs. Polizzi, and she says, You are you are out of line, mister. Uh you <laughs> I didn't I don't like this one oh, bit. No, it's interesting. The the last uh this is just a weird story, but who cares? Nobody nobody does anybody listen to this? Here. Here's a nice story. We were at a restaurant, and some and I had a brand new leather jacket that I was wearing. I was probably I don't know 18 years old or something. We were out celebrating something, and the waitress spilled ranch dressing down the back of my coat, which is okay. ranch and leather not a good mixture. It obviously no. stained it no. quite a bit. And ranch and, in any any material isn't t- a terribly good look, but it, yeah. And they and the manager at the place said absolutely we'll pay for the cleaning fee 
But my mom was not happy with that because she thought that it was forever irreparable damage to the jacket. And she wrote a letter to the main offices of this restaurant. I won't say which restaurant it was. And she got the full value of the coat. It was Olive Garden, wasn't it? It was Olive Garden, wasn't it? It was an Olive no, Garden. No, it, <laughs> it wasn't. It's really <laughs> close to that. But it yeah. is not, it's not an Olive Garden. But she got the full value of the... Well, I guess I did. <clears throat> the full value of that jacket. So you got the cleaning fee plus the jacket because of the letter that she wrote. And she's renowned for this. It's amazing. Great negotiation. Oh, yeah. it's There's something about a handwritten letter. People don't do enough handwritten letters. For, for good and not bad anymore. Purposes. I mean, yeah, not anymore. I think they're making a comeback. You don't, you don't comeback. get handwritten letters very much. I think they're going to make <laughs> a comeback. I really do. Yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, and we'll talk about this in a little bit. You know, now they're having you know machines write your handwritten letters. Oh, that's you can actually like, go online and and get a letter written and have it sent to you with a machine that has written it in you know really nice penmanship and the whole thing. That's the movie Her. Remember that movie, Her? Yeah, yeah. The op- yeah. the operating system that he falls in love with. That's his job. Yeah, he writes love notes, and you know he figures out okay who's this from, what's the situation, whatever. He the human being. Oh right. Writes, and then oh right. And then it uh, it writes it in the handwriting of the person, and then sends it off. That's right. I forgot about that. So that already is a business. Because it's well, it, I mean, yeah, it is. A, I mean, it, but I think in this case, it's machines actually writing, doing the writing. They just put, you know, they put a, it's a robot <clears throat> that writes the letter in, you know, with a pen on paper, and then it sends it to you, and then you can send it off. So you can do like, you know, a hundred letters, right? You know, to someone, you know, to, not to someone, but to some people, right? So it's, it's what we're, I've seen marketing uh, campaigns run this way where you get this handwritten letter and it's, you know, it's a marketing piece, yes. but it, you know, it is all for all intents and purposes, a handwritten letter. Cause it's pen on paper and it was, you know, it's in, you know, it's in a font that's not, you know, typed, but it's a machine that created it. So is it handwritten? I don't know. I mean, that, I mean, we're, we'll definitely get into yeah, that. We'll, we'll have a, we have a lot talk of a little bit about, about, yeah. about that yeah. as we go. But before we start, you're good. You're feeling you're, you're, All, yeah, you're feeling, yeah. Feeling I mean, well. it's you know, it's I, I'm 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 sympathetic for the people in the Europe right now that are that are blistering hot because it's hot here in California. But yeah, no, all is well. All is well in the in the hood. Yeah, you're not How feeling you? that kind of heat in Southern California right now, are you? Is it is it beautiful? Well, we are. Mild? No, we're yet. Yeah. No, no, it's not. It's not beautifully mild at all. It is 110 degrees here, so it's it's not uh. not you know. And dry, 110 and dry. So it just makes it unpleasant to be outside at all. Wow. See, it's 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 actually very. So nice. I'm a little it's about 84 and sunny, sunny today. Not yesterday was really humid. Today, perfect. You should come to Cleveland. Should, yeah, you'd love it here. I, 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 I I'm sure I would. <laughs> I'm I'm sure I would. <laughs> Uh, hey, before we get started, we had quite a few people do reviews for us. I just wanted to say thank you. Uh, we had some we amazing, did yeah oh, we, fantastic. I, I haven't told you about all of them, but they're coming. They're coming through now. So okay, just a reminder to everyone: we're paying uh, in cryptocurrency for any of this old yeah. marketing review, <laughs> which is worthless. Really, that's you not know, true. If you think about it. Now you can't do that. <laughs> you can't. You can't lean in to the media. Yeah. And, yeah. and how it's all worthless. No, it's not. Because you have your idea coin, and I have my tilt I coin, and we're paying the equivalent of $20 per review. So yeah. if anybody wants in on this, we would take it. Because what we found, I don't know if people know this, but the more reviews you get on you know, iTunes and or Apple, Spotify, Google, yeah. it helps yeah. you get found. It helps us get found. So yeah, if anyone wants to do sure, a review, we're helps. paying twenty dollars. Robert will pay, and I will pay twenty dollars for each one. We've already done a few. Well, I owe you some. I'll send you those because some of these things I just don't tell you because you're busy. Yeah, you're busy. 
But yeah. Well, I just need them. I need to be able to send them the stuff. That's right. No, that's right. It's very important. Send them some coins. It's, coin, it's, it's sure. sort of part of the deal, and I need to let you in on yeah. these things. But if you go to this old marketing dot site and just go ahead and, and send us an email and let us know that you did the review, we'll get back to you and we'll we'll lovely. We'll get you the money and it'll be great. But we would really appreciate it, and it's working. Yeah. Yeah. We got like ten more Absolutely. ten more downloads last week. It's huge. Oh. That's a huge increase. That's 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 a hundred percent increase. I think <laughs> we actually do fairly well. We we are yeah. we actually are, believe it or not, a top <clears throat> marketing podcast. I think that's true. I think that is true. I th- we hit we I, generally I, hit know. the top list here if you and there. S- if you sort on quality, we'll be at the top. Put it that way. What? <laughs> I would sort on a lot of other factors, not necessarily quality. <laughs> But yeah, yeah, and we've got a great loyal group of listeners. So thank you. We do. And, uh, we did. That's the that is the truth. Yes, they stick with us. They that do. is there. There's no doubt about that. So. All, right. All right. Let's, Let's, Let's talk about what we're going to talk about sure. here. We got a good show for you here. We're going to talk a little bit about Netflix's results. Um, they uh, announced their second quarter results, and you know, depending on which news article you read, they either lost a million subscribers or oh my god they lost a million subscribers you know the different narratives it there is. um <laughs> we'll talk about the creative designers and why they should or should not worry about the artificial intelligence known as doll e2 uh and we'll have a fun discussion around what's going on there then we'll talk about half of young people uh meaning mostly gen z how they're using tiktok and instagram instead of google for search and what google may be trying to do about it and then we'll talk a little bit about dungeons and dragons because of course both Joe and I grew up being D&D fans and how Hasbro may be cashing in on the content uh, strategy, content marketing strategy that Hasbro is employing for that amazing brand. Um, And then I'm going to rave a little bit about the ANA, the Association of National Advertisers, which is a very weird thing for me to say. You've never never raved about them before. This is I don't think I've ever raved about them, but they did some really nice work that I'm going to that I'm going to rave about. And then you're going to talk a little bit about an acquisition. I am. Uh, and that it hits actually close to home for me. So uh, it, it, it's and it's with, very very well, uh, interesting. You know, before we start here, uh, was your were your parents? Did they let you play D anD D as a kid? Did they have a, any qualms they, about? They that? didn't know. They didn't. My, know. Okay. I was. I am the quintessential Gen X latchkey kid. My parents knew nothing about me. They, they, <laughs> they, they didn't even know they, that you were. They living knew there. enough. To, <laughs> yeah, they knew enough that when I showed up inside the house, that it wasn't an intruder. But other than that, it really wasn't. Uh, yeah, my my my. You know, you know. Well, as Doctor Evil says, you know, the details of my life are quite inconsequential. Um, you know. So yeah, interesting. They, they did not know. They did not know that I played D anD D. Did Did you finish Stranger or video Things? games? Did you finish Stranger Things four? I did okay. just last night. Yeah, oh, we just finished last it night. just oh, last geez. night. Well, we're, just last night we finished. The reason it. why I bring that up is because for those of you who haven't seen it, there's a the the town adults have a very negative impression of Dungeons and Dragons, and it reminds it's a little bit over the, the top, way. but it reminds me a lot of when I was growing up. There was a negativity that adults had. They thought it was satanic. Oh, of course. Oh, yeah. yeah, the devil's cult. Yeah, it's, it's the devil's work. And then and I came home yeah. and I had I actually bought. Um, a Black Sabbath album that I that was immediately taken taken away from me because it's, it's all <laughs> together. It's all the same thing to my at least yeah. to my parents at the time. So, and that plays a big role in uh, this season's uh, Stranger it Things. Does. So, it does. Did yeah. you did you like it? It was. I did. Yeah. I thought I like you. I thought it was probably, you know, thirty percent too long. Um, you know, in terms of, I basically it was just a bit indulgent. Um, in terms of, you know, okay, we get it. You know what I mean? It's like get, you know, move along. But I did really like it. I, I loved the ending, and I love how they teed up the next season and all of that. But what's so interesting about, and this is a, this is a, a content issue. There, you don't have the editing concerns that you had in other formats. Like I watched uh, the the offer, which is on Paramount Plus, and it's about the uh, the. the the making of the Godfather, and there's a yeah. there's a whole episode that talks about what they're going to do because of the length 
of The Godfather. And they're like, well, we can't show it as much. And there's no way people are going to sit through this. And there, it was a serious issue whether or not they were going to cut about 40 minutes of The Godfather out. Well, you don't have that. You could just say, oh, we could just add another episode. You, you don't you don't have that in streaming. So I, I don't I think a lot of sometimes the, you know, that construct that you have is a good thing where you actually have to edit to make time and then other in this case well, i think they you just know, the, let it go like we don't need to edit let's just we talk, go yeah well we talked about this a little bit last episode with regard to digital versus analog media and how <clears throat> in the digital world you know and, and this is especially true in a in a digital media world where there's streaming involved you know the reason that they were so freaked out about you know the feature film length and things like the Godfather is because the physical media was so expensive. Yeah. Right. You know, if you add another reel, that's, you know, that's another reel that has to be, you know, distributed across hundreds of movie theaters. It just adds hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars to your cost to go, you know, to go over time. So <clears throat> that was why they were so concerned about being under a certain amount of time is because, not only, you know, for the for the movie theaters, which had absolute, you know, ideas about how long movies should be because they need to be able to fill, you know, a number of showings per day to maintain, you know, economic viability, but also the amount of physical media that it took to actually distribute that stuff. But now that it's digital media and now that it's streaming in your home, you're right. You're exactly right. It's like nobody. It doesn't matter how long it is. It can be, you know, it can be two hours or eight hours. It, doesn't you know the the costs the incremental costs are 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 mm -hmm. in, you know they're so small that's why i mean it is the golden age of television or programming where you have some of the best that's ever created but also at the same time you have some of the worst crap that's ever right. that's ever been created because yeah. it doesn't some cost, of that discipline is gone it doesn't yeah, cost, yeah you don't you're not you know. paying for film you're not paying for time you're not paying for the projection you're not paying for any of those things you're just paying for your phone which, right and you get a lot of, and you get a lot of, you know, a, a lot of series that, you know, Obi Wan's a great example. Have you seen the two and a half hour movie cut of the of Obi Wan? No, no. It's really good. I mean, so some fan took the entire uh, eight episode series of Obi Wan and cut it down to two hour to a two hour movie, and it works and it really works no and it's a way. much better that's awesome. experience because of it yeah it's really interesting i think that's the case in a lot of these series like i thought the same thing about uh loki which is the one of the marvel yeah. series i just think that some you know you, you there's always that episode that you're like well that that was a filler like that was on that they just that episode was there because they wanted six episodes <laughs> Yeah, so, that's right. It's like, what was the yeah. purpose of that? So, yeah, I, I like the. That's why I love I love the movie format. I love a, a hour and forty five minute two hour movie. Get my popcorn out the door. Yeah. Anyways, yeah. speaking of streaming. Speaking of streaming, let's talk to our first story, which is, of course, coming to us courtesy of Marketing Dive, and you'll find out how uh, interesting and synchronistic that is toward the end of the show. But the, the, our story here from Marketing Dive and the headline is what to expect from Netflix's ad-supported tier. Uh, basically, the article says Netflix aims to launch an ad-supported tier in early 2023, which we've, of course, discussed on this show before. Uh, while Netflix is busy clearing more licensed content for the offering, co-CEO and chief content officer Ted Sarando said certainly not all of Netflix's library would be available for the lower-priced option. At the same time, the executive doesn't view the smaller catalog as a material holdback. Uh, basically, all these details arrived very shortly after Netflix announced Microsoft as its exclusive ad tech and sales partner, also some Thing we covered last mm -hmm. week on the show. Basically, um, the article goes on to talk about uh, all of this. And the other narrative is, of course, all of this came in the, uh, and this is, gets to the end of the article, but uh, other certainly news outlets covering this as well, which is Netflix's Q2 uh, uh, results 
which saw fewer subscriber losses than expected. Basically, the network had said that they were going to lose probably two million, um, but they lost nine hundred and seventy thousand instead. Depending on which article you read, it basically was, you know, the sky is falling. They lost a million subscribers or, oh, my gosh, they're doing better than expected. They only lost a million subscribers. So depending on what you saw, the narrative is very, very different. But doesn't matter. They still lost some audience. And this is probably some sort of wake up call for them on their advertising model, as it also pertains to the idea of, you know, competition and consolidation. And what do you think? What do you think about all this? Their Q2 results, as well as their ad supported tier? Well, it, it, first of all, it was an amazing uh, uh, play on expecta- <laughs> expectations, because they did say in the last earnings announcement, whatever it was a couple months ago, that the sky was indeed going to fall. And, and this one, was yeah. Like, oh, it's not so bad. And then stock goes up. Yeah. Everyone's well, they happy. sand. They clearly sandbagged a little bit. They they, they knew. They knew. they did. They knew. But this is this is kind of how you you play the market. And then the, everything was up. Roku was up. All the streaming platforms were up in the stock market. the The challenge that I have in in looking at what Netflix is trying to do is there's no way that they're creating a better customer experience from this. For for their right, it's there's no way an ad experience is going to be a better user experience. They're trying to get a price point that's around your Paramount plus uh, your Peacock, something less than $10 a month, right? They're trying and they'll do that with an ad supported model. But if you consider there's two sides of the this this customer, if you will, for Netflix, one is you and I who are Netflix customers who we watch the streaming content. And the other side is a boatload of of advertisers that want to plow money into Netflix, especially from the targeted user base that they have. I mean, so <laughs> it is a it could be a gold mine for Netflix from the ad standpoint that could help them to you know plow that back into research and development and do some amazing things. But it seems to me that I mean, how much more can you get? How many more millions of users can you get worldwide? from netflix isn't aren't they at a point robert where they're going to say okay this is our bread and butter but now we're going to diversify out into other things so we we talked last week about the idea of a netflix theme park that's not necessarily a big revenue generator but the idea that netflix is getting into other areas if netflix put their uh you know put more behind a stranger things franchise or um some of the other ones that they umbrella academy or some of the other ones they could monetize those franchises much better than they're doing right now and maybe there's newer businesses that they're not looking at i think that's where they're going right isn't that where they have to go yeah i think that's i i you know globally i think they've got a lot of room to run internationally right? they've, yeah, they've, sure inter- internationally right u.s and canada not as much um you know, I just while you were talking, I looked up their U.S. numbers, which are reported at 73 million households. And so I think the current uh, U.S. television household, as estimated by Nielsen these days, is somewhere in the 120 million or 150 million, maybe um, uh, households, total households in the U.S., um, which means there's, you know, they're not going to double. Put it that way. You know, you can't, you can't double your subscriber numbers with an ad. Well, they're, they're, Netflix the is US. already in those other houses too. They're just sharing passwords. I mean, every house. What? Well, maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Probably. Maybe. I think. You know. Another I mean, twenty-five. I think million. There's. Yeah. 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 I mean, so th- there's not a lot of room to grow here in terms of numbers of households or numbers of subscribers. I think there is probably a interesting play here globally as well as um, an incremental number that can be monetized in by the way in multiple ways now so the the nice thing about advertising here is that it doesn't have the same kind of linear uh, linear scalability right you can always add more you know to a certain degree I mean I'm, I know there's a ceiling on this but you can add more real estate. You can add more options in terms of ad supporting, and then you can raise prices as, as demand, you know, um, goes up to the advertisers as well. So there's a lot more ceiling for 
uh, for for subscribers as well as revenue in terms of adding this model. So I've come around on on why they should do it. I think I think it's a good thing that they're doing, and I think they I think the brand can withstand it. I think the interesting thing will be to see if it starts to cannibalize. In other words, if they start losing premium subscribers that that sort of ratchet down to the ad supported model because that's just an alternative way. And I think the, what they're doing is is that they're letting you know that, by the way, that's not a good alternative for you if you're a premium subscriber because you're not going to get all the programming, right? That's yeah. what they're saying is is that you're not, you're, you're not going to get – it's not everything on Netflix plus ads. It's, eh, it's some segment of the Netflix programming and ads. And so that will be the, th- that will be the, the, the real division there. And at some point – they're going to run out of runway and they've got to acquire somebody. They've got, to, they've got to start expanding their business. And we talked, you know, very briefly last week about them expanding into physical things like, you know, theme parks and stuff. They're going to have to, they, in order to keep growing, they're going to have to diversify. Well, if you look at, I just wrote this down and this is the way I look at it. Netflix is two major competitors, Apple and Disney, in my opinion. You look at Apple TV Plus, you look at Disney Plus, you look at Netflix. If you look at those business models, Netflix is the business model that's most concerning because they're not, to your point, they're not diversified. Apple and Disney have already done their diversification. Apple started in hardware. Disney started with cartoons. They've got all sorts of different business lines. So that's where when you run into a recessionary period like we are right now, the the, if you look at the stock price that's been most damaged of those three, guess what? It's Netflix because they're the one that's, that's most risky from a diversification standpoint. And this is how all content yeah. models start. You start by focusing on one thing you're really, really good at, and then you diversify. Yeah. I, could, I love the focus that Netflix has had, and that's one of the reasons why they've been so successful. But it's also hurting them right now that they haven't diversified when they had the chance, they had the money. You know, three years ago, they could have done all sorts of things with diversification and didn't do it. So here we are now, and now they're open to all sorts of things. It just seems yeah, late. I, I, I'm sure they'll be successful, I, but it's late, in my opinion. Well, I, I, I hear you on the lateness part, but I, I you know, I, I look at the, you know, I, I look at their opportunity and diversification slightly differently. Um, Disney, for sure. I'm not sure about Apple. Um, I, I would put them more in the Warner, um, sort of camp, right? Where if you look at what Warner has done and now discovery Warner, um, you know, they have diversified in a number of ways as well, but it's through media, right? So they haven't, you know, so, so Netflix could do a similar thing, which is they've certainly got Netflix, but they could also launch, you know, they could have feature films that launch and they do, they have feature films that launch, you know, in theaters um, that can drive revenue. They haven't done a very good job of that, of, of, of doing blockbuster and, or creating franchises, which is the real challenge from a media perspective is that they've just not been successful in creating, you know, besides Stranger Things and, you know, uh, uh, and arguably they're not doing a very good job of that, right? Where, you know, where's the spinoff series? There should be spinoffs from Stranger Things and there should be, you know, they should be creating... Uh, an entire universe here, and the, it seems like it's going to be done next, you know, uh, next year without much of a, you know, uh, of a place to go. But the other place they could go is they could go, like we talked about last week, they could go into audio, they could go into, you know, they could go into other forms of media and start to expand their footprint from a diversified media portfolio that that is a similar thing. They don't necessarily have to follow the the Apple or Disney model. No, th- that's true. It's it is it is they they've all gone different directions. But you, when Queen's Gambit came out, what was that? A couple years ago. Uh, yeah, and it was it took off. It was the most popular. We we were both scratching our heads. It they you know you couldn't get a Queen's Gambit chess set. Like you, there were so many branded merchandise opportunities that were never there. They were never created. Maybe they are now, but at the time they weren't. And I just thought of yeah. They, they were so focused on getting out this amazing uh, episodic storytelling and they didn't focus on, oh my God, if this thing is even a little bit of a hit, there's all there's so many opportunities. 
and they just didn't. I wonder if they took, and maybe they do that a little bit more with Stranger Things, but it doesn't seem like they do it with Ozark. They don't seem to do it with some of the other things that they have going on. I don't. It seems like there's so much potential there that's untapped. So yeah, I agree. I mean, it's the, you know, what you want is sort of, you know, I mean, you can see smaller attempts at creating these universes, like you know, the Yellowstone is a good example, right? Where you can see from the beginning, those showrunners have seen Yellowstone as a as a universe that they want to try and create yep. multiple strands from, right? They tried to create, you know, they, from the fact that the first one was a hit, they created, you know, the you know the the, the one that was the the prequel prequel, right? You know, sort of great grandfather, and then they've created now the prequel prequel, which is you know sort of I think it's due to launch actually very soon which is, you know, supposedly takes place in the 30s and 40s, um, which is, you know, would be, you know, the, the, the father of, uh, so to speak. So they're trying to create an entire universe and multiple series around it. That's what I'm missing right now from Netflix is how are they, how are they diversifying in the content, the original content that Got they're it. creating yep. to create things that would, you know, that build audiences that, can, you know, because as we talked about last week, that's the thing that Disney and Paramount, um, and to some extent, HBO Max have uh, is, uh, you know, are these, you know, universes, you know, in the in the case of HBO and Warner, it's DC, you know, the universe. And in the case of uh, Disney, it's Marvel and Star Wars. Sure. And, I mean, it's so many, so many and and so on and so forth. You know what I mean? I think you're right about the media diversification. That's a good point. I mean, Disney's does that better yeah. right now than anyone else. If you think about when, anybody, well, when yeah, Iron Man, crazy think about when it. Iron Man came out, you basically had the Iron Man movie and you really didn't have much of anything for a year because you didn't, yep. you didn't know then. Now you have tw- 20 assets a year coming out of the Marvel universe in different forms. Yeah. So that's right. Yeah. All right. Let's move along. And speaking of creative and, and, content and and all that stuff is ai going to take our job uh here is a very interesting headline um so this comes courtesy of marketing brew and the headline is how much should graphic designers um i would add artists into that as well um worry about doll e2 uh the article opens up by saying has technology gone too far is a question you may ask yourself as you scroll through the latest meme where people use an AI tool to generate images rating from lo-fi nuclear war to Shrek the Redeemer, which is pretty good, I gotta say. Mm-hmm. Um, the simplified tool is based on a real AI application called Dal E2, developed by R&D company OpenAI, and the hype has been swirling around it for months as the company tests the software and people join the wait list to try it out. Last month, Cosmo used it to make the first AI-designed magazine cover. As the technology for creating images becomes more advanced and instantaneous, questions will likely arise around certain creative roles. With AI already being used in copywriting, what are the chances of a graphic design becoming fully automated? The article goes on to talk a little bit about some of the points and counterpoints to that from the OpenAI CEO and some other professors, as well as journalists, as well as some graphic designers and I mean, I've signed up for the wait list. I know you've signed up yep. for the wait list. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you think? What do you think about all this? Uh, it reminds me, it just, it makes me think about what all the opportunities, not just the design that, that are going to happen. First of all, if you just look at this tool in and of itself, I sent the note to uh, Paul Reitzer over at uh, Marketing AI Institute and he came back and he said he's been using the tool for a month. It's absolutely amazing. And sent some of the samples that he's like, is like I want They're incredible. A, I, yeah. I want to create a, a crazy a crazy robot in the middle of the ocean or whatever. And it comes up with that, and you're like, oh my god, that's incredible. And then uh, J.K. Kalinowski, Paul, and I were having a little email going back and forth, and the concept came up of what about rights management? Like, okay, the open AI is going to build this for you, then who gets rights? And they just came out. You and I just talked about this before the show. Yeah, They just came out and yep. said they are giving the rights back to the creators. So, so, you get, so you get the rights for these. It's really incredible. It almost seems too good to be true. Now, granted, this is... It's, I'm sure it's not perfect. I don't even know about using the tool or whatever, but I could see. So let's say that I'm walking around and I've I've got Alexa hooked up, or, and I wanna and I wanna say, give me give me something that sounds like a cross between Red Hot Chili Peppers and Cyndi Lauper or something like that. Which I don't know who who would ever do that, but 
there it's going to automatically generate something. You've just created something new that's never been done before, and a computer did that. And then if you actually get the rights to it as well, this is really kind of nuts, right? Isn't it crazy? It's absolutely, it's absolutely crazy because imagery is stage one, right? I mean, just to your point, audio is next, and then video. Uh, you know, and really any media from that point forward is, is you know, is, is, it's a fascinating it's a fascinating challenge. You know, the, I would agree the results I've seen coming out of this thing are, are incredible. You know, I guess where I put on a little bit of my skepticism hat is I wonder, and it's a question because I haven't played with the tool and I haven't seen enough to start to see a pattern is if there will be a recognizable pattern. In other words, it's, it's, you know, what, what I, and let me see if I can explain myself well here. When I create something, you know, and I go, Hey, give me a crazy robot in the middle of the ocean. And I say, and it gives me a crazy robot in the middle of the ocean. And then somebody else says, Hey, give me a crazy robot in the middle of the ocean. Are they going to get something really similar, right? Because it's already there. Or does it always create something different and in the moment? Uh, and so that's true. Yeah. W- and so the the as the number of iterations increase, I have to think. I and I again, my knowledge here is really shallow. So people will, you know, people with much more expertise in this will correct me. I'm sure. But I just have to think that right now, because the requests and because the asks of the system are relatively unique, because there's a small number of them, relatively speaking, you're getting amazing results. But I suspect when that request goes up to the size of, you know, an early Google, you know, when we start talking about hundreds of millions of requests or tens of millions of requests every day of this system, that the system will start to repeat itself because it's just easier and more efficient to do that. In other words, it's it for the machine, it's much easier and efficient to repeat something and give it to you sure. uh, based on something it's done before rather than go to the expense of creating something new. And so I just, that's, that's the question I have of, of, you know, whether you'll be able to start to see, you know, for example, you start to, you know, you start to see it and you're going, ah, oh, okay, that's a Dolly two image, you know? Oh, okay. I got you. That's a Dolly two image, right? If you, if you, if, you know, the human eye starts to be able to perceive the difference there. That's I, other than that, I think there's, it's a fascinating, fascinating. Well, thing. I think it all, all creators, we need to look at, uh, you know, how we can be more strategic, right? I mean, already grammar, grammar is being automated out you're in your word program or Google, whatever, and you get, you're yep. getting your recommendations for, for grammar. And then it's going into copywriting and then you can already do this. It's just, you know, nobody's talking about it yet. I could feed in all of James Patterson's novels to the, to a computer and say, okay, there's the formula spit me out a James Patterson like novel and they could do it. it. It can already be done. This yeah, so I think that's true. I mean, and and but but for the results I've seen of that so far, have been pretty miserable, right? In terms of building long form content, there's a there's a very funny uh, YouTube video actually out there where they fed, I think you know a thousand or you know ten thousand science fiction scripts into an AI machine and said write a science fiction movie, write a five minutes science fiction movie. And then they filmed it and it's, you know, as written by the machine and it's just, it's awful, right? I mean, it's as awful as you think it might be um, and silly as you think it might be. You know, the dialogue is really hard to listen to, but it's funny because of that. Um, and so, I, and I know the technology has certainly advanced since then, but I, I think, you know, f- creating images in the style is a, is, is something that is different than putting you know, 60,000 words together in a thing and different than putting audio together. Cause I'm with you, right? I think the future is definitely coming where you go, Hey, I want a new song and I want it to be in the style of, you know, I want it to be a heavy metal version of this country song. And you're going to get something, 
you know, out of yep. that, right? You know, you'll get the music, maybe some lyrics or whatever, but it, I think all that's coming. It's just, it asks a very interesting and philosophical question, which is, you know, where, where does the role of creation, art creation go, you know, it, because am I creating art when I, when I put in the inputs to the AI, am I creating art or am, or is the machine creating the art? And yeah. Well, I mean, it's a good, I mean, fascinating discussion. Well, it's interesting. There's a whole big discussion in the Web3 world about this because there are a number of generative art projects that are very, very uh, successful and worth a lot of money. And if when if you put in the inputs, inputs and you create all this, you you are creating art, and then all then you're telling the computer to do these things, and the it's so it's a good the so the. You, everybody's cre- the whole process is the art creative process. Uh, I mean, you yeah. you could I say mean, hey, yeah, what you're saying then is Adobe, a... we use Canva as part of that. Well, sure, is that any sure, different? Sure, sure, sure. Yes and no. No, I I, I I I think you're I think you make an excellent point, right? Which is, you know, sixty years ago, if I had given an artist the power of you know, uh, in design or the power of Illustrator or the power of Photoshop, you know, they could have done some amazing things right and and so you know it it basically what you're saying is is that just is it's another extension of the paintbrush you know what i mean it's just it's it's just a different tool by which an artist creates and it's the it's the actual idea that is the the creative aspect of this not the execution of it per se but (laughs) having said that this is this is definitely not just an iterative step here, right? You know, you can argue that, you know, giving a tool uh, of, of Photoshop or, or, or InDesign or Illustrator, or any of the software programs was a, a tool of scale um, it, because you still required the artistic talent to be able to put those things together. Uh, this is not that. This is literally think up any idea and have the machine put it all together yes. for you. It's more than an extension and basically... Yeah, <laughs> we we can all we can all be designers now and not have any designing talent. Is that what I, you're saying? Boy, no, I am not saying that I, at all. I, I think it's a you know, because the other thing is, is that what you're not getting, as I understand it. And again, I have not played with the tool, but but what you're not getting is the ability to alter it. You know what I mean? You're getting a finished work. And so. You can you can continue, I guess, to ask it questions and iterate, but it again coming back to the pattern thing, it's not like I can go, oh, give me, you know, give me. A, I don't think this is true. You, you tell me. You correct me if I'm wrong. If you know better, um, I don't think you can say to the system, hey, give me a crazy robot in the middle of the ocean, and then it comes back with a picture, and you go, eh. I need you to make a tweak here yeah, to I make don't. the water a little bluer and a, a you I'm know pretty I want, sure I want the clouds a little. I'm pretty you know. sure it doesn't do that yet, or does it do? Right, because like, sometimes if you need to, you know, you need a finished work, you need a vector based illustration, whatever the case is, you need it layered. I don't think it's giving you that. It's like, oh great, right. this is right. seven layers, and I can move these around or whatever. Doesn't mean that they That's can't right. do that. This is just a start. Eventually, I think it's. I think yeah. the. The purpose of this and us bringing it up is, as creators, we need to. Th- I, I really do believe we, we've talked about it forever in content marketing. Where remember when we started content marketers, we would start with, oh, we're doing all the things, we're doing all these other, we're doing all, we got the editing and writing and we had this, that, and the other, and then we're always like, okay, good, we've got a lot of these tools now. We've got to think more strategically about how to use our time, make it more valuable. This is just a great leap into that thinking about okay you know if as a writer i'm concerned about some of these content ai platforms sure. that are out there Absolutely. as a designer designers are obviously concerned i think that we don't know where this thing is going to go i i mean i i only think about it from science fiction books it's where they go in and they're like okay is that i want real meat today instead of that synthetic meat you can't really tell the difference, but you know you pay a little bit of premium for real. Maybe that's where we're going. It's like, oh, I just got this newsletter. Okay, is this was this written by a human, or was this yeah automatically yeah. generated? 
We're right. going to be asking that question pretty sh- I mean, it's already sort of happening. Um, but I think it's going to happen a lot more where you're going to sign up for a newsletter that is almost all automatically generated. Yeah, I think you're no right. human touch involved. Yeah, I need a drink. I know, that. right? I mean, goodness. It's like we <laughs> <laughs> do something different. <laughs> it it is. You're just coming too it fast. Is, you know. Yeah. Boy, no kidding. I just every day I feel more overwhelmed than 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 the, than the previous. Which, by the way, great um, opportunities all right. for all of us. A lot of change. Change creates yes. Opportunity. A lot of ch- so a change is opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. You know. There you go. As the as the Chinese saying goes, change a crisis is simply change riding the din- dangerous wind. Oh, um, all right, yeah. Mo- m- <laughs> moving <laughs> along to our next story and probably the the last story that we'll have a chance to to cover here before we get to rants and raves uh, is coming to us courtesy of Business Insider, which automatically has my you know <laughs> spidey sense of accuracy going up. Um, but I digress. Uh, anyway, the headline here is nearly half of Gen Z is using TikTok and Instagram for search instead of Google, according to Google's own data, says the uh, article. Uh, the article opens up by saying nearly 40% of Gen Z prefers using TikTok and Instagram for search over Google, according to Google's internal data. Google is changing features in search and maps to try and attract a younger audience. And TikTok poses a threat to not only Google search, but also YouTube. TikTok's coming for more than just its social media competitors. Nearly 40% of all of those uh, young people prefer searching TikTok and Instagram over Google search, says a new uh, report from Google's internal data first reported by TechCrunch. Um, TikTok, which is the fastest growing social media app, has exploded in popularity over the past few years. That's an understatement. Understatement. Uh, So much so that it has inspired social media competitors, Instagram and Snapchat, to roll out copycat video features in Reels and Spotlight. Now a Google executive has confirmed that TikTok's format is changing the way that young people conduct internet searches, and Google is working to try and keep up. Google Senior Vice President Prabhakar Raghavan uh, told the Fortune Brainstorm Tech Conference that according to Google's internal studies, something like 40% of young people, when they're searching for a place for lunch, they don't go to Google Maps or go to uh, Google Search, they go to TikTok or Instagram. And Google confirmed this statistic to insiders saying, we face robust competition from array of sources, including general and specialized search engines, as well as dedicated apps. Uh, what do you think about all this? I have a take on this with regard to search. If if I buy the numbers, which I'm a little skeptical of, but um, what do you think? I It makes me think that I'm incredibly old because I don't <laughs> well, even there know. Is that. So, yeah. okay, I'm... I'm just using this example you talked. So something like so, forty percent of young people looking for a place to, to go to lunch, they go to TikTok yep. or Instagram. I don't know how that works because I go to Google or Yelp. Is generally like especially Yelp. That's if I want to go find a place for lunch, that's usually generally where I'm going, and I'll default secondarily to Google. How does this happen on TikTok? Am I gonna like? Am I going to see a video? It doesn't. Somebody- that's, why I, that's why I'm very skeptical of these numbers, because it doesn't happen that way. So, yeah, what am I certain? Yeah. So, so, but this, the Google senior vice president is not necessarily making this up. What's the purpose? Well, of this? no, but they're also not. They're they're also re- keep in mind that they've got a vested interest in making sure that you you that they present their competition as thick and hard, and it's really you know very difficult for us. And oh, woe is us because we're Google. Well, but they, they no, definitely they have that insider. Insider. This the last line of this whole thing is what is is probably the biggest news story that that blew me away. Insider intelligence. I mean, take it for what it's worth. Insider intelligence predicts. TikTok's advertising revenue will overtake YouTube in two years. That's nuts. That does not surprise me. Yeah, well, given the usage of TikTok. But I mean, I mean, it is. Hey, YouTube had a ten-year head start. Yeah, and uh, so yeah, it's, it's kind of crazy. The, the time spent on TikTok is 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 huge. There is just no doubt about it. I mean, you know, kids now will sit for. 90 minutes or two hours watching TikTok. Kids. Just, I know, you know many adults that just do. Scroll. Well, yeah, adults too, right? Do I mean, that. you know, it's not, yeah, it's just not kids, but it's, but it's adults. But here's the thing. I What I believe is that, because I've seen it on TikTok, 
is that there is a growing, a fast growing element of content that is what you would consider sort of the classic YouTube how to or help videos, right? It's not just crazy people doing dances or lip syncing sure. to music or, you know, prank videos. There is a, there is a very fast growing element of useful, helpful videos that are showing you how to do things. So do I believe that kids uh, are going to TikTok and Instagram and searching lunch? Absolutely, 100%. Yes, I do. Because they're trying to get ideas for lunch. Are, now, do that I believe would make that they're sense. Searching Not specific rest? places, but ideas. Yes. Right. Cool. Do yeah. I believe that yes. they're searching for specific places to go to lunch instead of maps? No, I do not believe that. I, 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 somebody would have to show me direct data and search query terms on that because I just don't believe that's true. Um, and so that makes sense to me that people are going to search for topics that interest them like lunch or dinner or, you know, uh, dentists, you know, or, or whatever, you know, sort of topics that they want to see content on, but not specific places, you know, that are replacing maps. Now, having said that, there is no secret that vertical search is eating or drinking Google's milkshake a little bit here, right? You know, there was some statistic I saw late last year, I don't know if it's still true or not, that said that Apple Maps was actually starting to challenge Google Maps in terms of popularity. And, you know, we already know that Amazon is a bigger search engine for product searches than Google these days. And in terms of, you know, searches like for travel, for, like you said, for restaurant reviews, for, so very specialized vertical searches are definitely replacing Google search as sort of the default. Mm -hmm. um, so I absolutely believe that Google is seeing increased competition from vertical search engines. I just don't think from a, from, from the, the specific headline here, um, that it is, uh, you know, the, the, if you ask if there, if, is there a larger number of younger people searching on TikTok? Yes. I don't, I, I think that, that, sure. that answer is probably right. But what are they searching for is the question. And that's, I think Google still owns that market well, it's, in the it, biggest way. It's, it's lean back technology versus lean forward. I exactly. talk about this for print go. all the that time. Much right? better way to say well, it. When we used to that, sell, you said it much better. Well, we used to sell print versus uh, internet back in the day when the internet just launched. He said, oh, yeah. Well, print is a lean back technology where the executive is looking for ideas. Uh, internet is lean forward. I'm looking for an answer. Well, Google search, Google maps, so you're looking for an answer. You want, you want to go somewhere, you want to do something. Uh, TikTok is lean back. I want ideas. Yep. I want Great inspiration. Point. I want to be entertained, almost like television. It's the same type of thing. So it's a very different purpose. I think we do need clarification on this, but it's super interesting to me, especially how. Yeah. I, I mean, sh shoot, we could be talking easily in two to three years that TikTok is by far the number one media company in the world. I think I, I got to say, I got to th I think TikTok is ready for a supernova. I really do. I, I'm I'm not sure I see the trajectory of TikTok as clean as hmm. as 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 everybody's predicting. I just and a lot of that is just simply because I, I'm just taking the I'm literally just taking the counter argument. But I'm my 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 skepticism on the continued trajectory of TikTok is is at is high. And I and I'm basing that solely on my own usage, like like. This earlier this year, I was down the TikTok rabbit hole. I mean, I would spend, you know, a, a good part of the last half of my eating lunch at the table, like watching TikTok videos and get lost in it. And now I look at it and I go, eh, it's just the same shit over and over again. I'm, I'm losing, I'm losing a lot of the interest in it. Interesting. It's just, it's yep. just, yeah. That comes in. That and comes I'm not back following, to, yeah, I'm not finding a lot of it comes back to programming too. people to follow. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah, that comes, exactly. that could, that could also change as TikTok gets into more professionally. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's, it should be interesting. Yeah. It's all going to be AI. Yeah, absolutely. It's all going to be AI. Yeah. Though. There you go. It's all going to be Dolly <laughs> too, right? You just ask it to assemble something for you. All right. Let's just quickly go into our rants and raves where Joe and I go off on a little bit of a rant or a little bit of a rave that makes us feel like we're searching for deleted text messages or something that makes us feel like we found them. We found all 187 minutes of it. Um, 
All right. What do you you uh, you? Oh, let's let's do mine first because yours is yours is actually an interesting discussion. Okay. Mine's very Go quick, ahead. so I'll do mine first. Um, I'm just gonna rave a little bit about. We'll link in the show notes, obviously, uh, the link to this. Um, the ANA, which I often rail against because of their sort of take on paid media and sort of myopic look at at, at the world of marketing through the lens of advertising. Um, it's in their name, of course. Um, they have released a new, what they're calling the Influencer Marketing Measurement Guidelines. And basically, they got a bunch of volunteers from brands together, um, from companies like Bayer and Hilton and uh, Pfizer and, and, and a, a number of other companies, and Cigna, uh, Nationwide, uh, Puma, I mean, just a, a really all-star sort of team together from different brands to put together not just influencer marketing, but organic influencer marketing measurement guidelines. Uh, Because as they actually say in the opening of the document, um, they're different because the amount and level and depth of data that you get from a paid campaign on Facebook or LinkedIn or Twitter is a lot different than what you get organically because obviously you're paying for you know, placement, they can give you a lot of data that you just can't get in the organic world. And they say, you know, so they've really built these standards and measurement guidelines around the idea of organic influencer, which is in many ways content oriented measurement. And it's just a really great, wonderful piece of work. You know, I mean, as I've said, when I posted this out on social media, um, I can quibble a little bit with some of the definitions, but they're exactly, they're just quibbles. The fact that they got all these marketers in a room, they didn't equivocate, they came out with a strong point of view, definitions. I just think it's a it's a wonderful piece of work and kudos to them, kudos to the the team that put this together and kudos to the ANA for putting it out um, and actually taking a stand on this. And it's just, it's just, it's really helpful. It's a very helpful piece. So I, I wanted to rave about well, it. Well, I'm in total shock that you... Yeah. Yeah, it's, raving about you know, the do? Association of National yeah. Advertisers. When I, you know, when you see good things, when you see good work in the world, you got to shout it out. Well, you have been really making strides as a human being, so congratulations. Uh, on well, that this one. is what I try. My, <laughs> yes, my rave and, and commentary is uh, as you were talking about at the beginning. Industry dive. We we use marketing dive a lot on this show. Uh, is being yeah. sold to UK based events firm Informa. By the way, dun, dun, little, dun. Little, little history Full of the transparency. Past. Yeah, little the history parent of the company past. of Content Marketing Institute. Content Marketing yeah. Institute sold to UBM, which was purchased by Informa. So um, there's a little bit of that there. But what's interesting is I didn't know all the detail with Industry Dive. This this deal is a, is for $525 million. That's 5x revenue. I think it's about 12x profit. Uh, Industry Dive has, I think, 23. How are you feeling about that deal now? How are you feeling about that CMI deal now? I feel pretty good about it, actually. <laughs> okay, good. All right. Oh, there we go. Yeah, they right, feel good. I, go. I, I, I like what, what's interesting about this, and this is where I want to have a little discussion, is the, the Informa that I've always known in the past has really focused on being events only and web properties just to support the events. That's where Content Marketing Institute was a different being in and of itself, right? Because we had content marketing world, but we had a very robust email newsletter, web presence, uh, a number of digital products that supported the business. And that was new. It was a little bit different than what uh, Informa UBM at the time was used to. And when Informa bought Penton Media, which is my old company when I worked there from 2000 to 2007, they basically bought Penton, took the events businesses out of it, and then spun off and sold uh, the the, con- the media arm to, it was just called Endeavor, which is still going strong today because they didn't necessarily see the value in that, obviously, and wanted to just have the events. Well, you know what? COVID-19 did a number on that strategy, obviously. Be- and maybe you have in- some insight into this because I don't think before COVID-19 they would have done this deal. Now, this is a ama- I mean, this to me looks like a match made in heaven because you've got 23 amazing sectors. By the way, industry dive, they opened up in construction, education, marketing, utility, and waste. So good for them yeah. targeting niche sectors to become the leading informational experts. And now they've got these robust uh, media products in 23 areas. Great journalists, I think over 100 journalists they have. And it's just ripe for Industry Dive to promote Informa's uh, events that make sense into the, each of those sectors, as well as launching new events. I mean, I could see an event 
industry dive launching an event in each one of these areas. So it's it's yes. it's pretty darn brilliant. But I think the change in strategy is this idea. The whole show is really about diversification. I think Informa says, look, in order to to be the company we want to be, we can't just be events only. So, what do you take? What do you, I, think? you know, well, uh, you know, a hundred percent, and you know, and again, full transparency here. Uh, you know, CMI pays part of my bills, so uh, so I do have a, a, a vested interest in this. Uh, not much; it's pretty arm's length, to be honest. But but you know, I do have a take on it as well, which it is. It is a genius. What it took me back to, when I saw this headline, I, it took me right back to that conference room where you and I met in the original days with UBM during the acquisition, and we were pitching. We, we were saying, we were we were talking exactly this topic, right? Why the event was more valuable because of the surrounding media properties, yep. and the and the success therein, right? Including, by the way, the print magazine, um, and this is just sort of the, you know, I mean, and there's been a lot of triggers, certainly the pandemic being one of them for sure. Um, uh, and about the events business being accompanied by a media business, but this is just such a match made in heaven because it, if you look at Informa's portfolio across the entirety of the organization, cause it's a big company, you know, you look at the, the, the portfolio there and they have banking and pharmaceuticals and construction and cybersecurity and grocery and healthcare and legal and you know they've got events in just about any category you can think of and oh my goodness gracious look at industry dive it's just you could literally do a match 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 now instant media property for these events uh, with an instant audience by the way instant opportunity for new revenue streams like webinars and email newsletters and all sorts of things and it just becomes this you know t to be frank I i'm i'm surprised it took this long yeah um and i just think it's fascinating one question mark i have in my head which is the the reason i even know industry dive other than marketing dive is because of course the company was the one who purchased the consulting firm away from NewsCred, like when NewsCred split into two companies, basically their consulting arm and their uh, and and their uh, welcome software, the company that they sold off the consulting arm to, the services arm, basically the licensing of all of the imagery and the access to the freelancer network as well as the consulting services, that was all that was sold to Industry Dive, and I just wonder. What happens to what happens to that part, which will be an interesting question. To, I think to, that well, if, if I'm reading this right, they have one. They say they have one global content studio. I'm I'm assuming that's just part of the content studio. I think they wrap I'm right in there. So, yep, yeah, they may they may do exactly that. They may do exactly that because they have. I mean, they do the whole thing where they say, oh, 26 publications, 23 industries, 100 journalists, one global content studio. I can't find at least on industry dive site anything about the news cred consulting other than the global studio. it's there no it's it's there is it? it's it's there yeah okay. it's there if you uh i forget exactly where it's not it's not front and center um it's called studio it's called studio id uh, yeah it's not um, front and center, it's at the very bottom sure. navigation oh, if you okay. find it Got you know it. content okay. fueled by expertise so, oh there it is yeah. strategies Oh. Strategies built for results, you know, as opposed to strategies that yeah, aren't. Yeah, so it folded results. under their whole. Yeah. I got it. Their, their, That's their right. Whole. Yeah. So, anyways, congratulations to the founders yeah, who started congrats. this ten years yep. ago. Put in oh all my the gosh, work. Good for them. Bootstrapped this uh, thing. Got some funding. Good for them. Love it. Yeah. Perfect. I mean, and the beauty is, is that how well constructed their content is. Like, if you look at all their publications, they all look exactly the same, except for some of the imagery, obviously, and some of the, you know, sometimes the colors, stuff like that. They just did an incredible job of structuring content and managing that through an infrastructure and built an efficient engine. It's just, it's just look, a, it's just a case study in, in, in how to do this right. If you actually go to Industry Dive's publication site. That's where you can see it, right? They have banking dive, yeah. biopharma dive, construction dive, and they have their mission statement right there and the link. It's just, it is go yeah. it's gorgeous to look at them all. They have a couple outliers because yeah. you know they have social media today, which is separate. They have pharma voice, which it was is an acquisition, yeah, which yeah. was an acquisition. CFO yeah. was an acquisition, I believe too. Yeah, but exactly. All the rest are, are dives, all the same, 
and by the way, all the URLs were available when they launched this too. So I'm sure they have a thousand things and then dive.com in their GoDaddy portfolio. Yep. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Oh, shoot. Exactly. All right. What's up for you coming up? Uh, yeah, it's, uh, you know, we've got some family in town right now. We're doing, uh, as, as people are, are listening to this, I'll be on some roller coasters at Kings Island, which is near Cincinnati, oh, Ohio. Very nice. So we're going to do roller, very nice. you know, roller coaster crazy. We've been doing a lot more of that with the family uh, because the, the kids love the roller coasters. And then they have a cousin in town. So looking forward to that. So should be should be crazy. I can't take all the I can't take all the twisting and turning anymore, though, Robert. I am getting a little bit older. <laughs> so but I can still do most of them. I can still do. There you go. What do you got going on? Uh, we're going to try and get up to the beach. We're going to go, we're going to head north up to Santa Barbara to our little place up there and spend the weekend at the beach. Cause it's just been not pleasant here in terms of the heat. Um, you know, it is the middle of summer. I don't mean to bitch too much, but it's, you know, it, it, it's, we're just going to get on the beach and hang out there and, you know, read and, of and enjoy the weekend and then, and then be back of course, and do work next week and, you know, do this show next I'd week. I just so, stay at the so beach. It's, it's, it's just, it's, just stay yeah. at the beach. Right. Yeah, there's that idea. But my problem is, is that I have my workstation here, you know, with my video set up and the audio set up and everything is just I don't have it duplicated up there. So it's it's a it's a hard thing to I find it really hard to work up there. So mm. it's, it, you know, because it's like I'm in a hotel room. It's like I'm in I got my laptop, but that's all Sounds I really like have. a future project. Indeed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Indeed. Indeed. Don't give me, I don't need it right now. So I don't need the project right now. Thank yeah. you very much. All right. Good deal. Um, all right. Well, that is it folks. Thank you as always, uh, to the amazing folks, uh, Heath Dingwell, um, James Gardner. Uh, thank you so much. Um, Dennis Shaw, all the story ideas that we're getting through the hashtag are so helpful. So thank you for that. Um, and, uh, really appreciate that and do hashtag us up. Won't you at hashtag this old marketing on the Twitter. Uh, if you want to send us a story idea, they're very, very helpful. Um, if you want to dive into the other 332 episodes, get on over to our site. Won't you this old marketing.site will of course have the show notes from today. Um, and all of the links that we talked about there, including all these wonderful assets. Um, and remember reviews, remember those reviews, you know, we are paying for them. It feels weird to say that. I, I'm just going to be honest. It just feels a little weird to say that, but you know, it's idea coin, it's tilt coin. I mean, you know, really, are we really paying or are we just giving you something? There you fun go again. You had to do it. With? You could just say we're paying I know. for them. You don't have uh, to add. We're, yeah, I do. You it. know, it just yeah. feels a little weird. Okay. Anyway, give us a review. Let us know um, your rally ID and we'll, uh, we'll figure all that stuff out. And until we see you next week, just remember it is your story to tell. Tell it well. We'll see you next week on this old marketing.